and welcome to the first of four webinars on how to prepare for the examination on subject C3 advanced surveying. I'm Jean-Claude Tetro, the CBEPS registrar, and I will be the moderator for this session. The presenter is Dr. James Secord, professor at the Geodetic and Geomatics Engineering Department at the University of New Brunswick. The um, uh, last week, uh, we did post new learning outcomes and study guide for this uh, subject, C3. So uh, we encourage you to visit that uh, uh, as soon as you can. So uh, no, with no further ado, uh, I pass the presentation to uh, Dr. Secord. So James, I'm just going to transfer the screen to you. Okay, thank you, Jean-Claude, and good day to everyone. Now I'm just getting to my things and I'm putting up the same document that was just being displayed and offering a bit of explanation. First of all we're having four se sessions. The first one is in the bold and it's number one. Second, third, and fourth will be at later dates. I think the next one is in the 20th of August. And these four sections echo the same subdivision as you will find in the learning outcomes with, as you'll notice farther down, the suggested readings and uh, study questions. And I'm intending then to follow this in, more or less in the order that it's presented in this document and there'll be a similar one for the other three sessions. So, in the small print, as you'll notice a little farther up, we have a certain assumption in this particular syllabus item about background and it's given in the learning outcomes and I've echoed it a little bit here in the introduction. So let's go to the introduction section and I apologize because I don't customarily use this laptop so my fingers are doing more than they really need to. So recommended prior knowledge and skills. First of all, you should be very good at doing partial derivatives and realizing how to use them once you've done them. And that's basically related to the propagation of variance either as a separate process where you have a functional relationship and you take the variance of one quantity, say y, and propagate it into the variance of a second quantity, x. And this could be a, a vector, not just a simple number. Or the propagation of variance that's associated with the least squares estimation. And in most of the instances where we look at things, it will be the linear parametric estimation and the propagation, as you see, given there. We're assuming that you are familiar with most surveying equipment and preferably surveying equipment of high precision. And I guess the most obvious example of the difference is the most construction levels you have a fiberglass rod or something that's graduated possibly to the nearest five millimeters and you simply take a reading by estimating where it is on the rod. In high precision leveling, the level has a greater sensitivity, it has a higher magnification, it usually has a micrometer of some sort so that you can estimate the subdivisions usually to a tenth or better of a millimeter. So unless you can appreciate some of these processes, it might be difficult to understand what some of the study questions are asking. And this should be coming out when we have our, our discussion later. Um, some of the study questions have been categorized under those four major divisions of the topics. However, some study questions aren't only that topic. They could be in more than one topic area. So you may see some of these study question numbers repeated in other topic areas. So let's go now to the first major topic area which is dealing with design, the simulation, and error analysis. And these are also presented 
to some extent in a logical manner uh, as they are this one, two, three, four major topic areas in uh, increasing order of complexity. So we have a number of references that are suggested. The first one is an urban surveying and mapping textbook from 1979 and the juicy bits of it are available on the CBEPS website and that will be a primary reference for dealing with design because it deals with all the different uncertainties that we would want to associate with it. Although some of it is also discussed in Wolf and Galani or Galani and Wolf depending on the edition you have which is the adjustment computations where they give some suggestions on how to calculate the uncertainty in angular measurement, uh, height difference, distance measurement, and that sort of thing. Now, associated with the design is also dealing with specifications. And so the Surveys and Mapping Branch publication from 1978, although it is a bit dated and is now obsolete as far as horizontal positioning goes, it still pertains to leveling and also to the survey marker descriptions. A more appropriate reference for uh, specifications is the federal government, uh, the U.S. federal government publications from 1998-2002, which are exactly the same as the Canadian ones as far as describing the quality of positioning goes. Now, in that particular section then we deal with describing the uncertainty in observables and transforming that into uncertainty in position. Later on when we look at some of the other topic areas like engineering surveying and underground surveying, we go a little further from that and deal with the changes in position, which becomes another bit of a concern as we'll see later. In keeping with some of the activities which are slowly being replaced is the aspect of control. And I think most of you have been associated with doing property surveys where you've had to coordinate property corners with respect to, say, provincial coordinated monuments. We tend to think of these monuments as control in the sense that when we do the connection, we make our connection fit the coordinate values that are published for these monuments. So we have to look at the concept of control and how that has evolved and um, that's in those three references. Again, uh, Galani and Wolf, that's the uh, elementary surveying book which has a couple of chapters on control surveys, particularly using GPS, but we can't neglect the fact that most of the coordinates that we're using are a result of earlier surveys, so we have to deal with the concept of control in that regard. Now, I had suggested in the uh, in this particular document that what we're going to be doing is discussion rather than my giving a one and a half hour lecture. So I would suggest maybe we should open the floor to particular concerns and what some of you may feel would be the focus on this. Otherwise, we'll start going through, uh, I guess, the study questions. Jean-Claude, would you like to suggest anything? No, so if, you, if anybody has any questions, I'm, I'm ready to manage that. Uh, I did receive a question, a text question, but was wasn't relevant to the content of the. Uh, so, if anybody you can raise their hands at, at any time or send me a question by by the question pane. Okay, seems there's no questions, James. <laughs> 